All right, we're here at gotomath.com. Of course, we're doing some calculus. Let's go down here. We're going to be looking at the second derivative test. And what is that? 12-2. There it is, actually. All right, it says use the second derivative test and round to two decimal places if needed. Um, okay, so it says find relative extrema. In other words, we're going to be finding the minimum. And that's right about this little area here. And then the maximum, as you can see here, this would be the maximum. All right. So let's write this down. K of x equals negative x minus 12 over x. x minus 12 over x. Let's bring up the whiteboard. Um... I had to set my colors, and I might have forgotten here. K of x equal to negative x minus, minus something, minus 12 over x. Okay, got it. Minus 12 over x. So the first thing we're going to want to do is let's rewrite this, okay? So we have negative x minus 12 times x to the negative 1. So we wanted to bring that up into the numerator. It's a whole lot easier to take the derivative when there's just a constant here in the numerator. Okay. So now we're going to find the derivative. k prime of x is equal to, so the derivative of negative x is just negative 1. And then, <clears throat> I guess we need to look at this one over here. Bring the negative 1, bring it out front. you got a negative, so that becomes positive 12x to the negative 2 and we're going to go ahead and find the second derivative since we're on a roll here. So the derivative of negative 1 is 0. We take the negative 2, bring it out front. We get negative 2 times 12 is 24x to the negative third. And of course we're going to want to rewrite this with positive exponents. So we have negative 24 over x to the third power. Okay, but uh, this one here is the one we want to focus on right now because we want to get that critical number. All right, we want to get the critical number. So I'm going to rewrite k prime of x is equal to negative 1 uh, plus 12 over x squared, 12 over x squared. Alright, so let's, we want to solve for x squared here. And uh, what are we going to do here? We're going to do, uh, well, I actually want to set it equal to zero first. Wow, I'm getting ahead of myself. 12 over x squared, set that equal to zero. And um, you can bring this uh, however you want to do this. Bring this one over to this side, multiply by x squared. So we end up with x squared is equal to 12. And then what we'll want to do is square root both sides. So we have x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 12. Now that can actually be broken down into, let's see, 4 times 3, so it would be 2 times square root of 3. But we'll just leave it like that right now. Now all we have to do is take uh, k prime and uh, k double prime, I mean, plug in the negative square root of 12. We'll start with that one. So we have negative 24 over uh, negative square roots of 12, and that's all raised to the third power. And because that's raised to the third power, when you have a negative, times a negative times a negative, you get a negative, right? So we're going to get negative off the bottom, but we have a minus here. So this is going to end up being a positive number, and that's all we really care about. So remember when the second derivative is positive, okay, that was concave up, right? That'd be concave up at that point, and that means that's going to end up being a minimum, a relative minimum there, all right? OK, 
Okay, so then we would plug in the square root of 12 into it. Square root of 12 raised to the third power. So this will be positive. Of course, we got the negative out here. So this is going to end up being a negative number. And that means negative, remember, meant concave down. So this was going to, this will end up being uh, a relative max there, relative max, okay? So we end up with a relative min at negative square root of 12, and then k of, we'll plug negative square root of 12 in there, and that'll be our relative minimum. And then our relative max will occur at square root of 12, comma k square roots of 12. Right, that'll be our relative max. Now, I think it said round to two decimal places. So let's look at what is the square root of 12. And we'll round that to two decimal places. And I'll let you do this part here, but uh, this first part right here is going to be negative 3.46, it looks like. All right, like I said, you'll you do this part here, okay? And then this one here obviously be positive 3.46. And then I'll let you figure out what that is. Plug that into the original function. All right, so now what we'll want to do, let's go to the web page and compare our answers, right? So 3.46, right? And let's actually look at the graph before we do anything else. So we had negative 3.46, 1, 2, 3, yeah, that looks about, that looks about right, okay? And of course we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven so I don't think it's quite seven but it's close to seven it looks to me like pretty close to seven all right so let's remember those 3.46 close to seven 3.46 so we had a relative max that would be on this side of the graph 3.46 right and the negative and that's pretty close to seven isn't it okay pretty close to seven all right, so you'll want to come on over. You try to do that problem in about two minutes if you can. Um, you can practice that at GoToMath. Maybe I'll see you there. If not, you can leave a message there at the forum. All right, the forearm, the forearm. Okay, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.